Just, uh, just go ahead with your questions and maybe once again, if you guys would, just uh, as everyone's getting to know faces, just identify yourself to the court. So go ahead, guys. Uh, Brian Christopherson with Husker 24-7. How you doing, bro? What's, what's been your initial impression of uh, the guys, you know, having to jump right in with them in the winter conditioning and how they've responded to you? Oh, the guys have responded well. You know, the one thing I will say about them, when I walked in the door at the end of November, they were eager to work. You know, and that's that's something that I value. You know, their their willingness to be coached. You know, that's been that's been huge. So my initial impression of them was was very well, and they received me very well. You know, anything I asked those guys to do, from an attention to detail and effort standpoint, they've done. So I'm proud of them with respect to that. You doing? What was what, what was your approach from the beginning and getting an assessment on what was needed in, in strength and conditioning? How'd you go about um, evaluating the players on this team and then, and then starting to build a program for them over the offseason? Right. So coming in the door, I had to figure out what the baseline was, you know, and and within a lot of things that we do from a training standpoint. Those are evaluations in and of themselves. From a warm-up standpoint, from what we do in the weight room, right? We're evaluating movement efficiency, you know, mechanics. Um, from a, a volume and intensity standpoint, in a way in which we program, right? And our ability to track how fast the barbell is moving with some of the technology that we have. Those give us assessments on strength. You know, coming in the door, didn't want to ask them to max out, right? I hadn't seen them, you know. But that'll come later in the future. But Utilizing to our advantage, um, again, processes such as warm-ups, such as uh, movements in the weight room to help identify that. And then we have that baseline and we can build on that so that we can get, you know, more solidified numbers uh, once we approach spring ball and summer training. If you could sum up uh, Sam Kuehner from the Omaha World Herald. How you doing? Nebraska. If you could sum up in just a sentence or a few what kind of culture you want to create in that weight room uh, in the offseason, what would it be? Uh, I think the mentality from an offseason standpoint is to get 1% better every day, right? And understand what the goal is, but what it takes on a daily basis to achieve that. Um, again, attention to detail, effort are, are, are huge pillars of what we look to accomplish in the weight room. And also the mindset of hard work, right? Winter programs across college football, a lot of people are doing the same things, right? What's going to set you apart from those other programs across the country? It's not what we're asking you to do from a day-to-day -day standpoint, standpoint that's required. It's what are you willing to do extra. So um, I think those three things are, are, are things that we look to, we look to foster um, during winter training. Hey, Corey, Lauren Michelson. Where did that passion of the uh, I think for me, it, it, it came from me in a walk on myself. And I, I utilized the weight room to give myself uh, an advantage that I probably didn't have with some of the scholarship athletes when I was at the University of Georgia. Um, and, you know, through, through the weight room, through training, the belief that, you know, my strength and, and conditioning coaches had in me, right, and their communication with the coaching staff, I was able to be a contributor on that football team. So I think that's initially where that drive came from. Uh, in utilizing the weight room to achieve the goals that you want as a player. So then now being at Nebraska with a really historic walk-on program, mm -hmm. how much does it mean to you? A ton, right? Like, you know, I, I, I did a podcast a couple of weeks ago, and we, we hit on that. We hit on the fact that, you know, myself was a walk-on, Coach Rule was a walk-on. So we understand the level of commitment that those guys – you know, have to have in order to to not only make the teams that they're that they're trying to be on, but also to be huge contributors on those teams. So it's huge. Uh, the walk on culture that Nebraska has, having come from that background, you know, it means even more to me to to help these guys know and understand that you can achieve what you want to achieve if you're willing to put in the work. It was super important, right? And the minute Coach Rule uh, reached out to me and, and, and told me what the plan was, I was going to get on the first the first thing smoking out here that I could because I'm a firm believer in you know the fact that you have to build relationships, you know, in, in order to get what you what you want out of these student athletes, right? I can have the best strength and conditioning program in the world, but if I don't have the buy-in of those athletes, it isn't going to mean anything. So them seeing me. Uh, 
come to Lincoln with the head coach, I think that signifies a level of importance uh, that it means to me, and not only me, but the coach rule in his, in his head strength and conditioning coach, but also, you know, hey, we have to maximize the time that we have with you. So if I can get in front of you, communicate to you some of the goals and the expectations all right, in, in November, December, prior to us starting in January, that just gets us a little bit ahead of the curve. Yes, sir. Having worked with Coach Rule for the number of years that I've worked with him and Coach Cooper, you know, you, you build that rapport with one another and you do understand what it looks like uh, from, from, from the standpoint of starting at a program, right? We, we did it at Baylor together. We were in Carolina together, you know, and now at Nebraska, it's, it's an added advantage to having had to having had the working relationship that we had, you know, in the past. So uh, there's always constant communication between myself and Coach Rule, right, with respect to the the expectations that he has, not only from a weight room standpoint, but a program standpoint. You know, we all have to speak the same language. We all have to echo the same things within our respective areas. A ton, you know, I, some of the, the, the technological advances that have been made, even when, you know, from when I was a player, and that was about 10 years ago now, I finished up at the University of Georgia in 2013, um, the, the advances that, that have been made in this field have been great. You know, right back when I was a player, we didn't have uh, in our weight room devices that could track, you know, bar velocity. They may have been out there, but we didn't utilize them, right? The catapult GPS was just being introduced into the United States into the United States. So we didn't have the ability to track, you know, player loads and velocities that we have now. So with those technological advances, utilizing that to our advantage to understand where to take the training, that's been that's been huge. Um, the things that have stayed the same, you know, at the end of the day, 45 pounds is 45 pounds, right? You got to pick up a barbell and you got to train. You know, I'm a firm believer that there's no substitute for strength and no excuse for the lack of it. So from that standpoint, we're going to get on the barbell and we're going to train. You know, it, 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 it takes work to achieve the goals that you set for yourself and want to achieve. So that's the same. But the way in which you approach it as a result of the technology that we have today, you know, that approach may be a little bit different. Hey, Corey, Luke Mullen from the Lincoln Journal Star. When you're training linemen, how do you balance mobility and agility versus, you know, having strength? Uh, you know, I think from a positional standpoint, right, like you do what you need to do in the weight room. It, it's important for all of these athletes to be able to bend and move well, right? Those were one of the main goals of this winter, right, improve strength and mobility. So, like, that's, that's, that's the baseline. Never going to load up poor movement quality because that's how you get hurt. But at that same time, identifying what they need from a positional standpoint, right, like those guys are able to – lift more low than some other guys, right? Conditioning factors need to be a little bit a little bit different. They don't need to run the same yardages as some of the skill guys, right? So looking at it from a big combo skill standpoint, we we do a good job as a staff and giving them what they need to excel as athletes on the football field. Those guys didn't come here to be to be weightlifters, but we're going to use the weight room and use what we do from a training standpoint to make them the uh the optimal athletes that they came here to be. Doing, We've Kevin. seen some of the videos that you guys have been doing uh, over the course of the winter, including going out in the snow on the field. Is that your idea? Uh, I'm not going to take full credit for that one. It was a it was a combination of uh, of individuals who came up with that idea, but I was all for it once it was introduced. Coach Rule talked a few weeks ago about having like a physical therapist, like in the weight room staff, and sort of those complementary parts. How important are they? And also in like the recovery process, like how big is it? Right, so we don't need four or five Corey Campbells in the weight room, right? I have a niche that I feel. Uh, the other guys on my staff, they feel certain niches, right? And one of those is um, Co 
Coach Hobbs you're speaking of as the uh, as the physical therapist, right? He has an eye for things that I don't have an eye for, right? In terms of in terms of movements, in terms of how do you return an athlete who may have sustained an injury back to the field safely, right? And when I when when I can't devote uh, my full time and attention to it, when I don't have that because I have to deal with the team as a whole, I can rely on him. You know, to be able to do that, and from a from a sports science standpoint, talking about recovery and regeneration in the weight room and through training, we're tearing our bodies down, right? How 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 they how they regenerate and and become you know the athletes that we need them to be from a training standpoint that. That takes place, recovery, regen, sleep, nutrition, hydration, right? So when we look at developing the athletes here, it's, an ho- it's a holistic approach. Um, you know, you have myself as a, as a strength and conditioning coach, and on my staff you have individuals with different niches, but you also have to look at the nutritionists. You have to look at the sports scientists. You, you have to look at the athletic medicine staff because it takes a village. Um, to train these athletes and to get them to to get them to Saturdays and perform at a high level on Saturdays, it takes more than just strength. But you know that's why we function um, like we do uh, as as a football care staff. Corey, uh, Coach Rules talked about some of those holistic, you know, new age, technological advances that there have been in strength and conditioning. Um, you know, he said he, even if he doesn't understand them, you know, he goes to to you and the people who do. Um, can you speak to, to his willingness and, and want to, to to be at the forefront in this area and also what moving into the building next door when you do before next season is going to do to help you in those ways? Right. Coach Rule has a real good grasp on the best availability. Sorry, the best ability being availability, right? And in order to do that, we got to keep these guys healthy and keep them on the field. Uh, and as, as we just talked about, recovery and regeneration is of the utmost importance because football is a violent game, right? It, it requires uh, heavy demands from a training standpoint. But in order for us to, to, to be the capable athletes that we need to be on Saturdays, we got to take care of ourselves. So he's in constant communication, right? Like if, if he sees something that pops up that might be a good idea, he'll shoot that info to myself and it's like, hey, coach, you know, check this out. Right? Is this something that we need to incorporate that we aren't? Um, I also think the experiences in the NFL uh, have done well for us with respect to that. Like, you know, those guys that get a little bit older, a little bit more wear and tear on their bodies, it is super imperative to get those guys to Sundays, right? And, and you have to maximize your time within that week. So in order to do that, you have to stay on the cutting edge of what you can use from a technological standpoint to help keep these guys ready and available. And going into that new facility, um, you know, that, that, that was a primary focus in it, right? Like we're looking at what we utilize in the NFL, some, some modalities that we had at Baylor, and we're going to get those things in that building because it, it's our job to supply these athletes with the best of the best, um, and, and that's very important to Coach Rule. For the new right room, uh, looking at it, you know, I, I came in at a point where I was able to to put my stamp on it, right? So, kind of looking at it from a rack a rack setup standpoint, from what we're what we are going to incorporate from a recovery and regen standpoint, um, I did have the ability to 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 say, you know, what I what I wanted in that space. So, uh, I've had a ton of uh, a ton of input. You know, and I'm, I'm appreciative of the fact that I came in at a time where I did have the ability to have that input because we need to set that space that space up to train how we need to train and to recover how we need to recover. Is that a space of recruiting advantage or, or is it? Most definitely. Um, and I think, you know, that, that doesn't just hold true for us here in Nebraska. That's everywhere in, in college sports, right? Facilities are a recruiting advantage. And I think the added benefit for us here is we'll have the newest and we'll have the best, you know, it, Moving forward, people are mo- people are model their uh, their structures off of ours, you know. So that is when when you have the new and shiny things that attracts attention. That's attention well wanted. Is that is that a, is that a stressful situation to make that move in, in a time when you're also getting be getting ready for the season? I mean, I, or do you have people who are going to handle that? I don't know if you're going to take stuff from here over there, or is it all new stuff over there? Ah, uh, that'll it, it'll primarily be new, but you know, I won't. 
I won't handle anything with that. My prime focus during that period of time is training the guys. When they tell us we can get into the new building, we'll be in the new building. Until that, we'll be where we're at. I'm not going to say it's easy to pick them out. You know, I, I think these guys, they uh, they do what we ask them to, you know, right? Leadership uh, leadership is a process, you know, and you, you may be able to identify some guys who possess some traits that you see early on, but to determine if they're going to be an effective leader, that's going to take time. Corey, you played against Nebraska when you were in college. What do you remember about the Who? Uh, I remember Nebraska being a tough team, you know, uh, d during the time that I played, we were playing against guys like Will Compton and Amir Abdullah, you know, um, Amir's a guy that I had the opportunity to coach in Carolina, so we, we talked about those battles. Um, we came out one and one against Nebraska, but I will say those were two of the toughest teams that as a college athlete that I had to play against. I think it goes back to my college days. Um, coach Rule and I, we share a, a, a strength coach in Coach John Thomas. Um, John Thomas was my strength coach with respect to my position while I was at the University of Georgia, and he was the head strength coach at Penn State when uh, when Coach Rule was a player there. You know, and when I was working at the University of Cincinnati, I had the opportunity to meet uh, not only Coach Rule but Coach Scott, who was a strength coach at the time. And you know, from there. We share similar ideals. Um, again, understanding what it took from a walk-on standpoint to be a contributor on your college football team, but also to be coached by the same strength coach, right? Those individuals have, have a good eye in seeing the qualities of, of young men, but also, you know, who mesh well together. And when Coach went to Baylor and Coach Thomas reached out and, you know, he made that introduction, it was, um, you know, it was a uh, – it was a bond that was well received. So from the minute I went on an interview down there uh, to meet Coach Rule, uh, you know, we we we, we kind of knew who we were as individuals. And it was like, hey, if if Coach Thomas signs off on you, then you're pretty good in my book. And you know, I'm still with him now, so <laughs> I guess I was pretty good in his book. Thank you. All right. Thank you.